Well, hey there, church. We're in the middle of our series, A Better Way, and I'm so glad that you're here. We're studying the book of Ecclesiastes, and Ecclesiastes is a journal from one of the most successful people who ever lived, Solomon. And he's experienced everything that money can buy, and he discovers things that we could never discover on our own. So it's a really valuable book for us to be able to read. As a matter of fact, if you'd like some help reading through Ecclesiastes, we do have a group of people going through a reading plan right now. And so just send us your email and we'll add you to that list to where you can join that reading group. But last week we talked about, you know, what is better really. And really the theme of this whole book is that the end is better than the beginning. And Solomon talks candidly about our mortality and he emphasizes the brevity of life. And, and this is important. You've heard this wisdom, you know, things like this. Life is short, so forgive, right? Life is short, so love people. Uh, knowing the brevity of life brings incredible perspective even to our problems that we face each day. So a proper perspective on death, Solomon would say, is the key to true life. Now, imagine if I had a puzzle here uh, in my hand. You know, I don't know how many of you enjoy jigsaw puzzles, but this is the season where a lot of us open those up. You know, the, the days are kind of short, speaking of uh, brevity. And so we like to you know, engage in some puzzle building and putting some pieces together. And uh, so some of you are probably really good at this and others of you, you know, might steer away from putting puzzles together. You just find them frustrating. But just bear with me for a second. Imagine like our lives are made up of like a puzzle, so many different pieces. And each one of these pieces represents people or events or circumstances or times or places, whatever. But the point is, all throughout life, these things are locking together to make our story, to our, our life story. Now, we've all experienced this in putting puzzles together. There's a frustration component of puzzle, puzzle uh, you know, playing as well, right? Of not finding that piece. You're looking for that elusive piece and you're wondering where is it at? And then there's also that satisfaction of getting pieces to just lock together so perfectly and you're just like, oh my gosh, it just fits so perfect. That's the piece I was looking for. Now the difference between jigsaw puzzles and our lives is that in life, we don't have the box. We don't have the full picture in front of us, right? So that's what helps us finish the puzzle. So in life, God has the box and we have all these puzzle pieces that, and just imagine not having the box and having all these puzzle pieces before you, you can match some of the colors together and maybe create part of, you know, what that puzzle is, or maybe you can identify the edge pieces and slowly put those together without the box, but it only gets you so far, doesn't it? And here's the point there's without the box, there's only so much that we can control. Now, part of being wise is learning to accept that we have only a very limited view or limited access to the big picture, to the cover of the puzzle, right? The, the lesson we learn throughout Ecclesiastes is that not only is life brief, but that we as humans, we're bound by time, but God is not. As a matter of fact, Solomon writes, I know that that everything God does will last forever. There is no adding to it. There's no taking from it. God works so that people will be in awe of him. And so here's the thing, guys. God is working on a timetable much bigger than ours. He's not limited by time and space. We see things from a limited perspective. And one of the ways that our days are broken up are not just through days and weeks and months and years, but also by what we would call, or Solomon would write, as seasons. And he goes on, in Ecclesiastes 3, he writes about all of these different seasons of life. Matter of fact, you've heard this in songs, you might have heard this at funerals, but I wanna read through some of these seasons and speak into these a little bit. Solomon writes, for everything there's a season, a time for every activity under the sun. There's a time to be born and a time to die. We talked about that last week. <clears throat> a time to plant and a time to harvest. In other words, timing really matters. You know, you can't plant 
outside of spring and you can't harvest outside of fall. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. There's a time that some things must go away and there's times that we need to just get better. There's a time uh, to tear down and a time to build up. I mean, this happens with muscles, right? Like in our, in our, when we're working out, some of us are hitting the gym right now. A time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. In other words, a time that maybe we're really open-handed with some things and a time where we have to really save some things. You know, a time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. You know, maybe he's talking here about we need to keep our values through all seasons of life, but there are some things that we need to throw away. Maybe some, some grudges that we have against people, some hurts that we're holding on to, uh, some unforgiveness in our life. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak a time to love and a time to hate. You know, we're, this weekend here is uh, Martin Luther King weekend. And I, when I read these couple of uh, examples of seasons, I think of him and there was a time to, there's a time in our lives to be quiet, but then there's a time in our lives to speak out. And he did that so eloquently uh, in the sixties for civil rights and a time to love and a time to hate as, as, as Solomon wrote. And there is a time to, to just hate injustice when we see it, right? There's a time to do something and to make things right. And then he says a time for war and a time for peace. You know, what, what is Solomon writing? He's saying, look, there's an appropriate time for all of our experiences in life. I mean, have you ever laughed at the wrong time, right? You know, you, you laugh, but it was the wrong season to be laughing, the wrong moment to be laughing. So this isn't merely a description of what happens to us in life. It's really a description of the seasons that God sends in our lives. You know, we can experience his presence and his hope in all these seasons. And that's the promise that we have. There's a season for everything. And aren't you glad for seasons? I mean, aren't you grateful that some things last for just a little while? I mean, this, I think about New England. We love living in New England. One of the reasons we do is that we get to experience fully the four seasons, right? Now, some of us would say, but that winter season, that's a little bit longer than I wish it was, right? I wish it was a little shorter and we had a little bit more spring uh, in our life. But, you know, winter is really important. All seasons are important, but let's talk about winter for a second, because I think a lot of us just want to get through it. But what happens in winter? Well, in winter, it's very unique. Things shut down, don't they? They slow down a little bit. Animals hibernate. Uh, insects die. You know, people go inside. I remember talking to one person and they said, you know, I like the winter because I'm always outside working uh, during the rest of the seasons. This is my chance to just rest as part of the season. And so, you know, sometimes it's a good time. Winter can be good for farmers. It's a time for them to really, you know, work on their financials and get everything in order to fix their equipment. You're not really creating new things or maintaining things. You're, you're taking a pause and you don't have to be a farmer for this. This is a great season for reflecting, right? New year, taking inventory. You know what's interesting is in the winter, things are still growing, speaking of farmers, things are growing underground in the dark where you can't see them. In other words, you know, in your own life, you know, things can still be growing even in a season of winter. So how are you taking inventory these days? What are you doing to conscientiously reflect uh, how are you doing, you know, at, with your planning for this new year? I mean, look at the attitudes that you have in your life. Maybe you you look at yourself, you go, wow, I blame too much, or I'm holding resentment for far too long. And those kinds of things keep us from having a spring in our life. So begin to really evaluate different things in your life, the character of the people that you're around, the habits and routines that you have that keep you maybe from growing. You know, what are the behaviors, the relationships or patterns that maybe need to be put away, right? Every season is unique. 
Every season serves an important purpose. So, rec so what's so important here is to recognize what season I'm in. Now, that, the key word here is I, right? The temptation is to compare my unique season with somebody else's. Like right now, you might be going through a Job-like existence and other people are doing great. They're going on vacations. You see pictures of them in the Caribbean, all that stuff. Or maybe um, you, know, you, ha you, you, you look at people that have the metabolism of a teenager and here you are 50 years old and you're like, man, why can't I lose weight like that? Why can't I build muscle like that? And so many of our frustrations rise from the fact that we're blind to the change of season in our life. We haven't really identified the season we're in, so we struggle to adjust our expectations. So we need to recognize the season that we're in. And we'll be in it for a little while, and then we'll be moving through that season. So maybe for you, it's a time to buckle down and really place down roots, be rooted. Or it might be a time to pick up and to move and to do something different. Pay attention to your season. Ask God for wisdom in the season of life you're in. A season of speaking you might be into where you're just speaking into somebody's life or it might for you be a season of just sitting and listening to others. Maybe you're in a season of mourning right now. You lost maybe a loved one or a job or a dream. Um, don't run past that. Don't ignore it. We have a tendency to do that, to just ignore our grief and our pain. Some of us just even run past seasons of celebration, don't we? You know, we might have a win in our life and we, you know, we're so excited, all the hard work uh, that we did, that we put into that, and then suddenly it's over, we won. And rather than just celebrate that in that moment, we're on to what's next and we miss joy. We miss the practice of celebration. The reason we need to recognize the season we're in is because it's important that we ask this question. Am I giving my very best to my current season? You know, many of us really struggle with being present, don't we? We either live in the past or we're always looking to the future, right? And being present is really hard. It takes focus and attention. It takes putting our phones down. It, it, you know, one of the things that I love doing in the summertime is when I'm playing golf, I love to just leave my phone in my car. I feel like it just helps me focus and relax and enjoy my time on the course. Other people I know don't do that and they're always interrupted. And so sometimes you just need to be present. You need to put that phone away. Solomon writes in verse 11, he says, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He's planted eternity in the human heart, but even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end, right? He's holding the box, the puzzle box. We have the pieces. So if you're mourning, go ahead and mourn. If you're struggling at work, do your job with integrity. If you're confused, just trust God today each moment of your life. How you handle your current season, this is so important, will directly impact your next season. And God's developing you through the raw materials of your life. He's building you. He's gifted you with spiritual gifts and talents and abilities. And he wants you to live to your potential. So don't waste your seasons. Don't waste what God has given to you. Don't waste the character development. Your character needs to grow so that it will go well for you. It's not gonna be perfect for you, but it will go well for you as your character is established and developed. So be honest through all the seasons of life. Give your best, even in seasons of disappointment. You don't have to look back on a past season and have a boatload of regret. You don't want that. So whatever season you're in, enjoy that season. If you're single, enjoy the season that you're in, the flexibility that you have because of that. If you're engaged to be married, enjoy that season of dreaming and planning. If you're married with no kids, enjoy the peace and quiet. If you're married with kids, that's a whole different kind of married, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot of moving parts there. Give your best. If you're a single parent, I know it's so hard, but enjoy those moments because one day, they are gone, right? When my kids were in high school and in their early 20s, uh, my, they were out doing their own thing most of the time and uh, the house kind of quieted down. And um, we actually 
we have a pool in the backyard and it wasn't really getting any use. And my, so my sister's kids, uh, my younger sister, they were so young. So we had this pool and nobody would go in it. So we invited them to use the pool whenever they wanted. Well, they loved it. They would come over and then my wife, Laura, would make them cookies. And it was hysterical to see them. These kids would all just jump in the pool. They would laugh and they would scream and they would yell. They would fight with each other. They would cry. They would tell on each other. It was chaos. And I loved it. I loved every moment. It. I would sit on the deck and I would just smile and I would listen to the noise. I would listen to the sounds of life. I loved hearing that because it was so quiet around our house. So I never complained. I thought it was so great. Now, you know, these days I'm in this season of empty nesting and it can be so quiet, but it can be awesome as well. It's not all bad. I mean, I only have to pay for two for dinner instead of a whole family. I can, uh, you know, watch what I want on TV. I can develop uh, my own hobbies, whereas before it kind of was just running kids around to each of theirs. And, um, you know, it comes with its challenges as well. Parenting adult kids is challenging. Uh, matter of fact, I want to share with you some opportunities at this church, uh, even this um, coming up in the next couple of weeks. We're going to be having an empty nesting small group. So if that's what season you're in, maybe you could sign up for that. We are having a parenting small group. So if you're parenting kids, man, that would be a great thing to sign up for. Uh, we could all use the help we get that we could get, right, in the season of life that we're in. So sign up for those groups. There's a whole bunch of other ones as well. But I would just advise, be careful not to worry through every season, right? We always worry about our kids. We worry about what's next. We worry about things. Enjoy each season because it's gonna be over soon. We just recognize this in our own life. Our daughter Jillian was leaving for her final semester of college. And it just dawned on me the day she was leaving that this was the last time she was probably going to be staying in our house as like, this is her house, this is her room. She's moving on and she's moving on with her life. And she'll come back and visit, but it won't, it'll be just to visit. It's different, these seasons change. Solomon goes on to say, I've seen that there's nothing better than for a person to enjoy his activities because that's his reward. For who can enable him to see what will happen after he dies? And again, we're limited with what we can see. So am I giving my best to the season I'm in? And then finally, I would say this, invite God into every season of your life. You know, part of growing up is learning to grow small it's walking with God, trusting him with every step of our life, not these big giant leaps, but just every step of our life. It's realizing that you're not alone in any season. Walking with God is receiving satisfaction from God as a gift, knowing that I'm limited by time, but God is not. It's learning to live with my limits and with God's omnipotence. So it allows us to accept the seasons of our lives as given to us by a gracious God who loves us no matter whether things are good or whether the things are bad. He's still with us and he cares for us. The prophet Isaiah said this, God doesn't come and go. God lasts. He's creator of all you can see or imagine. He doesn't get tired out. He doesn't pause to catch his breath and he knows everything inside and out. You know, Isaiah is saying we all have the pieces of our lives that are given to us. Things come and go and seasons change and it's only God who knows exactly where everything is meant to go and in which order and at what time and why. And that's why I think the words of Jesus are so important when he said, come to me, all of you who are weary, you're carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. He wants to give us rest in all of our seasons. And so, we trust him. We face the hard things, relying on his strength. We celebrate the good times, knowing that he loves us in the good times and the bad. And through the ups and downs in the seasons of our life, we live knowing that in this short and busy life, 
God is still great and he's still very, very good. God bless you.